another edition of Cohasset Common. I'm your host, Town Manager Chris Sr., and this week we're back at the Cohasset Schools. When we last met with Superintendent Sullivan, the conversation was about how the schools were planning to reopen, and now, thankfully, they have. Let's go to Superintendent Sullivan and talk about what's going on in the Cohasset School System. In an earlier edition of Cohasset Common, we met with Superintendent Pat Sullivan to talk about plans for schools. And now that we're several weeks in, we're back with Pat to talk about how it's going. Welcome back, Pat. Thank you, Chris. Glad, to, glad you're here and glad to be back. I, I, I you know everyone's very glad. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't think that kids have been ever, any more excited to go back to school than you've seen them this year. That's the truth. You know, even my own kids at home, I never thought I'd hear the words how you know, anxious they are to get back to school. Um, but, uh, you know, they're, they're certainly, uh, it's happy to have, the, we're happy to have the students back, and I think uh, the students are happy to be back. So tell us a little bit about how things are going. Well, things are going, and I'm, I'm knocking on wood, of course, because we're, we're in a pandemic, but things are going very well. Um, based on the social distancing requirements uh, and limitations and the um, amount of students we can bring back safely per state order, I think we're doing it quite nicely. People have really come together. Uh, it's been a real town effort uh, to make sure that our kids are primarily, uh, as, as the most paramount uh, thing, safe, uh, and that the learning model that we're producing is successfully being implemented. So I'm really proud of our staff. I'm really proud of our custodians, our bus drivers, our food service workers. Uh, everyone, in the, and I'm proud to be part of Co the Cohasset Town for making this happen successfully for our students. You know, we're in our uh, end of our third week, and this is the the uh, second full week where we've been working with the cohorts, um, and we're in our we're in our cohort B right now. It's because it's a Thursday, um, and things are going well. You know, our f the feedback is is good. Uh, the feedback has been very collaborative. And um, this is new for all of us, mm -hmm. so we're all learning from the comments that, that we, we receive. And I'm really proud of the way uh, the staff is going about making sure that we provide the best opportunity for the kids. So I know we'll talk about specifics, but from an overarching perspective, it's really going well. Um, I'd say a little ahead of what I expected, where I expected it would be right now. And that's, that's, it's always good to be ahead, at least on something like this. Yeah. Right? Exactly. <laughs> right. So when we talked last, um, the school, the opening of school had been delayed a little bit to allow that prep. And it that's sounds right. like that extra two weeks really was well, well served. It was. It was well served for a few reasons. One is because it provided us with the ability to provide professional development for our staff in some of the key areas. And I had mentioned that um, we were going to do this, but we did. We had uh, some great uh, speakers. We're really the envy of a lot of the districts around us because of who we're working with for our remote learning. We're working with a group called EdTech Teacher uh, and a gentleman called Greg Kulak, who uh, actually did a, a session for parents this past week. Um, I understand that was very well received as well. It was well received. We had about 180 parents total that came into two sessions uh, and really learned about the approach that was being taught to our teachers and what, what we can expect. And Dr. Scollins and I were there and able to answer questions about how what Greg was speaking of is being realized in the class of public schools and what they can expect as we grow into this model and work with students. So that was really successful. And then we were able to have uh, some professional development on cultural competency, anti-racism uh, from a woman called uh, Dr. Carlise Warnham, who's worked with us in the past and is going to work with us uh, more specifically in October as we advance that. Uh, Monica Belson talked about trauma uh, and really how it ties into what students are seeing on the news uh, and our need for, for anti-racism and cultural competency. We had um, some clinical psychologists working with our staff in various ways to help uh, prepare them for uh, the kids coming back. Um, and uh, we, we also had uh, some, some really good professional development on all of our protocols and procedures run by our nurses. Um, and it gave teachers the ability to live in the space for a bit, to get ready for when the kids would come back, and to make sure that they were comfortable, that they felt safe, that they felt good about all the protocols, because that just emanates when the kids come back. We want to provide a, a calm and a controlled and happy atmosphere for the kids. And our theme this year, Chris, is to keep the joy. Because, uh, as I've said many times, our schools are joyous places. We have amazing kids, we have amazing staff, and we want that interaction to be joyous. Granted, with a mask, 
but um, that's what we're trying to do. So it's been a really, it was a really good preparation for our start, and um, our protocols are right now working, and that's great. And so it sounds like the teachers got a, a, a chance to kind of quote unquote test drive the whole system, get they really did. comfortable, uh, and then you got to actually open the schools again. So tell us a little bit about how that went. Yes, absolutely. So we were able to, um, also working with Glenn Pratt from emergency management um, and our new director. PPE, all kinds you, of oh, PPE. Oh, exactly. Right? Yeah. This is the least of it, right? This it it is. of sanitizer and it, all kinds. Oh, we, he, he did a fabulous job um, really guiding us through a lot of it. Um, you know, we have uh, markings and signage in every one of our schools. Uh, we have hand sanitizer in the appropriate places for for kids to, to uh, put on their hands when they're not able to wash their hands. Our facilities team did a great job making sure that everything was up and running appropriately for the kids in, in terms of uh, you know being able to make sure we had a proper flow of water in all of our bathrooms. We have a, a really good system for um, students. We're one in, one out right now uh, in all of our buildings, and it's working uh, with our scaled-down numbers. And we were prepared if it didn't work, to go with a different model, which would be more of a cohort model. But right now it seems to be going well, and that really is the safest model to ensure that, that we're social distancing uh, in terms of restrooms. But he was able to provide um, tents for us, uh, working with many of the members of the community. So we have tents for mask breaks. Um, we've had a, a good run of weather, uh, which has been nice. Had a couple of big storms, but uh, we've had a good run of weather where our, our kids are able to be outside a little more. Uh, that's one of the features that I think will, I hope will stay post pandemic. You know, I think uh, kids get a lot out of getting their fresh air and uh, re-energizing themselves as they come in. I think our staff does too. But yes, we, we those all those protocols uh, have been put into place. Protocols in the in our cafeterias, uh, leaving and exiting uh, mask breaks, what mask breaks look like, um, and uh, our protocols on our buses. You know, our bus drivers were amazing. They went around uh, in the weeks that uh, preceded the start of school and put up signage with the permission of the town at, actually at the bus stops. I got some, I call, I got some calls about that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know any town that has that. And it's worked out really well from it, what I understand. Well, it, it's great. And it's, it's just a show that we're trying to leave no stone unturned in making sure that the kids are safe. And that's what people should know is that um, we're listening and really trying to provide the best atmosphere and... We're, we're trying to communicate if something does come up um, right now as we speak, and I'm knocking on everything because I know we are in a pandemic, but we've yet to have a case in the Cohasset Public Schools. Um, if we do have a positive case, I'd be communicating that, you know, of course, being um, cognizant of the need to protect identities and confidentiality, but I would be, be communicating that to the, to the staff and also, of course, to the, to the families. So no news is good news in that, in that regard, and we're really trying to make sure that our protocols are in place. Uh, some of the other things that are happening right now, Chris, is our sports are up and running. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, and our sports are up and running in a, in a very safe way. You know, some of the rules have changed um, for some of the sports, like, for instance, the way they do... Uh, uh, face-offs at field hockey or, you know, and that would happen in lacrosse as well, just to kind of keep some distance. Uh, wearing masks at certain times, like in a cross-country race at the beginning of the race, when you might be close together. Um, our practices are running with masks, which is, is uh, a nice to see. That's one of the factors that I was a little bit surprised with, that I, I, I underestimated, I guess, the resiliency of the students about mask wearing. I think they're okay with it. No one loves wearing a mask, but um, with the proper mask breaks, they're they're adapting quite nicely to that. Anyway, I'm going on a little bit, but you can tell the protocols that we've had in place have been put uh, have been put to the test a bit in the last few weeks, and I have to say we're we're doing we're doing well with them. Um, but we do recognize that we need to hear input, and we're going to be collecting input and really looking uh, on October 28th. We have a special school committee meeting, and we're really going to be looking at all of our protocols, everything we've put in place, how our remote learning is going, hearing from students, hearing from staff, hearing from uh, families. And we're going to decide, you know, what do we need to tweak? And can we move forward to provide, uh, hopefully getting more kids back in here, um, knowing that we are restricted by just the raw square footage we have in our buildings and the amount of kids we're allowed to bring back in.
And again, that's one. Of, that's been one of the, the biggest challenges that I think all of us have faced is that the guidance has continued to shift, yeah. in, a, in a good way, but also right. in, a, in a bit of a challenging way. And um, the, as you've stressed multiple times, the most important thing that all of us are working on is to keep people safe. Right? That's right. So somebody may say, "Well, they're doing it here." It's like, "Well, you know, we've kept our numbers low, mm -hmm. and uh, and th that's a compliment to all the work that's been done by everyone in the community." I believe so. And the goal is to, you know, th the more we could do that. You know, Boston. I just heard again today they 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 de again deferred yep. their hybrid model because they can't get their numbers down in the that's city. Right. We don't want to be there, right? So uh, the more that everyone cooperates, and again, you know, as we said, it can be kind of a pain. But you get used to it, right? Yeah. I walked in to meet with you today wearing the mask. Yeah, right? you're all had you're wearing mask. your mask. You have a much cooler mask today. You I'll make sure you get one before you leave. Uh, thank you, thank <laughs> you. Um, and um, and again, kids, you know, I, I you know, there's a degree of having fun with this too. I, you know, uh, you get used to it and. You know, it becomes part of your routine, and it's about safety, right? That's so, right. Um, so, tell us a little bit about uh, when a kid comes in. What, what do they see? What's a little What's a little different? What's the same? Well, uh, obviously, what's different is there are less kids in the building. That's the first thing, and that that was really the first uh, safety measure. Is to You've kind of broken the the whole we into have two pieces, right? Yeah, the pretty divided in half. We do have, we're and this again is the tweaking. We do have a few more kids in our A cohort at the high school and middle school level than we do in our B cohort. But it's divided with schedules in mind, too. So it's pretty equivalent. Um, so what they see are, are less students. Um, they see a, a signage immediately uh, on which side of the, the, the um, kind of hallway to walk in. Of course, as you get older, it's, a little, it's, a little, it's not as necessary, but it, it's a requirement. So, and it does, it, it does make a statement. It makes a statement you know, that at all times, you need to be vigilant about keeping spaced out where you are in relation to your friends and you know we, we want to try to eliminate you know head-on kind of um, uh, meetings we want to try to keep them separate so they see that and then they, they they see a bunch of protocols where they're putting on hand sanitizer as they come into rooms um, teachers at the middle and high school level between classes are cleaning um, desks which is actually a measure that isn't happening in many of the schools surrounding mm. us uh, in, the, in neighboring towns. It's an, we, extra, it's an extra bonus, though, which is helpful. I, it, it is an extra bonus if you compare it to what they're doing. We felt it was important, so we're trying to you know, sanitize as much as possible in that. Uh, and what they see is they see teachers who are adapting, just like them, mm -hmm. who are so excited to, be, to see them. I mean, they, uh, one of the things that was really uh, heartwarming to me was to watch our staff Really, you know, they, you can intellectualize you missing the kids, but when you actually see them coming back, it, it's a real visceral experience because you realize how much they enrich. You know, we're teachers. How much it enriches our experience. This is this is why we went into the profession. Right, that's what you do. It's we, that we love interaction. kids, right, exactly, and we love helping them. You know, achieve that academic uh, moments that we we achieved when we were we were younger. So that's been nice to see it, that rekindle. And I also see, you know, a lot of kids. Obviously, we, we've had we've been in a pandemic, and we haven't been in school since March 13th. So, although the kids do see other kids, you don't see some acquaintances that you only see sometimes in school. Right. And it kind of builds, you know, you, you have sort of a an inner circle of friends, but there's this outer circle that you might not be as connected to. And um, the kids could kind of reconnect with that group, and it, and it just provides it provides normalcy. And uh, although it's, it's, the word normal is hard to use in this context because it's a different normal and you heard the new normal, but it is, it is normal in that you have more kids interacting with each other and interacting with a teacher. And, and we're, such, a, we're so, such social beings that to see that happening again is huge. Um, so you see a lot of protocols, but hopefully the kids still see the same joy that is present in all the interactions that we've had between staff and students before the pandemic, because that, that's the goal. So you have cohort A, which is Monday, Tuesday. Right now we have cohort A, Monday, Tuesday. This is the same in all our buildings. Right. Okay. So cohort A is Monday and Tuesday. It's pretty much alphabetically organized, but not exactly. Um, and then we have cohort B, which is Thursday, Friday. And in between, we have a, a full remote day. And the different levels have leveraged that full remote day to provide a slightly different model based on the, on the, the age level. Um, per per uh, school, so that's the way we are right now. You know, if we 
if things go well, maybe we're able to push forward with a more in-person model, which could do something, this is really hypothetical, but it could alternate the Wednesdays. We'd have to shift between the, um, the cohorts. We'd have to shift a little bit of some of the things we do. Um, but like I said, at the end of October, we have to look at everything. Right. Because you know, if we, Boston clearly is looking at things now and is realizing they're going to pull back. We're not there. Right. We're in a good spot. And we need to, as you said, keep all the measures socially so that we can stay in that spot because it's really important for the kids to have that in-person time together. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's as important for adults, but even more critical for kids, right? It's I mean, so critical you're, for them. You're growing up, you're learning, uh, and, and you're not just learning academics, you said, you know, that you've, you've stressed to me repeatedly and to everyone, this, the whole social and emotional aspects yeah, it, it uh, is. Of, of learning. I mean, you think about it. I mean, you look back and think about your middle and high school and elementary experience, and a lot of the memories are governed by your interactions with your yeah. oh, with I still your remember. Peers. I remember my, my, many of my teachers. I mean, some of them had <laughs> any teachers, uh, say, and I could probably name I could probably name all the ones from elementary school at least because they yeah. had such a formative experience. Me too. You know, yeah, that, me as well. And, and uh, you know, we're all here uh, because of great teachers we had, whether they were at the elementary level, high school level, college level, right? Yeah. And. Um, as you said, what the, the passion to have the, for the, it, it's great that um, that it's not just the kids; the teachers are just as excited to be back. They are, and they're improvising uh, in a, in a very collaborative and you know pr pr uh, a, a, a collaborative and very structured way mm -hmm. to make this all work. And uh, it yeah. sounds like you know everyone's been very excited about how it's been working. Yeah, I think I think um, students hopefully can see a difference in the way we're uh, attending to remote learning than what they saw in the spring. And I think families that was kind of an emergency, that right? Way. That was like it was crisis yeah. management. <laughs> and, and you know, the the more more I reflect on it, uh, and you as the leader of the town, you saw it, and you saw how it was. It sort of snowballed, and we thought it was going to be a couple of weeks, and then it was going to be a month, and then realized that we're in it for a longer haul, and that was very much, um, it was it was seen in a microcosm here in the schools, and uh, just weren't ready for it. Uh, so hopefully people are seeing, and I know they are, seeing a different approach, and we'll tweak that. And, and families also are more ready for this. You know, it's, it's a tremendous stress on families to have to work and, and juggle their students who are home, no matter what the age, but particularly the younger students, I think, in a lot of contexts. And we're more uh, reflective of that, and uh, I should say reflecting on that and aware of it, and we're trying to figure out ways that will provide the students with more engaging learning. Um, and we're also trying to work with families. One of the reasons we had Greg Kulik speak to them is because we want to try to help families understand what they should be expecting and what their roles can be uh, in helping the students and what, what, we, what they don't need to do. Because it, it is a back and forth there. We recognize it's not perfect. We would like it to be perfect, but we are trying to... Well, what in life is perfect? Right? <laughs> I know, and, and nowadays, you know, uh, we, we just, that idea of being resilient and being adaptive, uh, adaptable to situations, um, we're all trying really hard, and I, I feel good about what we're trying to provide in this context. But I'm very hopeful that the the rules will change, and that we're gonna we're gonna get kids in here. Because one of the things we've absolutely proven is that time in person is the most valuable time, and you really can't replace that uh, with a, a a remote learning format. I do believe, though, that when this is all said and done, big silver lining the quality of education across the nation um, will be at a higher level because there are some things that our teachers are doing now in an exploratory sense that we're going to be able to continue post-pandemic. No question about it. So I do believe if there's a silver lining in education, it's that, that our educational um, abilities have risen. Our ability to, uh, to work with kids in a remote context has improved. And we were also prioritizing and understanding when you have kids in front of you, like there are some things you need to do. And these things are, are incredibly valuable. So I think in the long run, it'll be, we'll be better for it. it, it it's, the, um, um, the, the concept, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm grossly misquoting this, my apologies, you know, don't let a crisis go to waste or the old, you know, make, make <laughs> right, yeah, a yeah. crisis, right? 
the fact is it has forced everyone at, at all levels to rethink mm -hmm. how you do things. Yes, it has. And you, that's, it's, it's always uncomfortable. You never want to have to do that. And sometimes when you're forced to do that, you get some of the best results. Now, again, this, as, as you said, when we had to do this in, back in March, uh, it, was a, it was a crisis management. Mm -hmm. We've had time to think and reflect and build. And, uh, and that's the most exciting part, as you said, uh, and we've seen on the town side too, of ways we can do things differently. We've been able to do things differently in a, in a good way. You know, the face-to-face -face -face interaction of public meetings, you miss too, yeah. right? And you, you know, you, there's things that Zoom will supplement but can't replace. That said, in the world we're in today, mm -hmm. it sounds like what the schools have been able to pull together, and again, the staff, I know you were, the summers are often a little bit quieter. That was most certainly not the case this year, right? No. The, the prep work in the fall. <laughs> yeah. um, that said, it sounds like everyone's been pretty comfortable that all this has paid off. Yeah. And, uh, and that, uh, again, fingers crossed, and we will get there at some point. We'll be able to get more kids back more regularly. That said, what's happening today is a really great educational experience. It, it is. And, and even from a remote learning experience where you, know, you have a unique, unique perspective of being able to provide some education for students remotely and asynchronously, and then you have the ability to connect synchronously with them, you know, we're really trying to, to understand and to get our teachers to work with our students about what is, a, what is an effective teaching model when you have something asynchronous like a, um, a film or using a, a product called Loom or a Screencastify where a student can go in and see a teacher explaining something um, and then can dive in at a self -paced, in a self-paced way with work. That's good for deepening learning. Um, you know, really interacting uh, with, on their own, with material. Whereas a synchronous, where it might be a video through a Zoom or it might be something in person, that's best for when you're connecting with kids or when you're clarifying question and answers. Um, so really, and there's more to each model, but really getting our staff to realize being intentional with when they're teaching kids in, in person and when they're teaching kids asynchronously and trying to develop our lessons, particularly at the middle and high school, in one big remote lesson where you're gonna have opportunities to be in front of kids in person during that lesson and being very mindful and intentional about what each model is doing is really gonna pay off. And if that's done really well, it actually will be a better learning model than just doing in person. We're not there yet. But in the long run, that is, that's productive. Uh, so I do believe that um, we will be better for this at, at the end of all of it. It's funny, in some ways, that's a little bit like what happens when you go from high school to college, right? Because you yeah. just don't have, you, you, the, the amount of work you need to do on your own really radically increases historically, right? That's right. And the better prepared you were for that, and that's in life too, right? You know, you don't, the boss doesn't lecture you for, well, sometimes they do, right? <laughs> but yeah. in, in most of the world, you, you have to you have to you get an opportunity to collaborate and then you have to go off and learn on your own and do projects yeah. on your own right well, it's true. teams well even even if you think about in person learning i mean we moved when we moved to uh, longer blocks at the high school for instance uh, back before i i came here i, I know they, they did the whole idea of that was that you weren't going to sit there for a 60 or 80 minute lecture you were going to be doing activities and working in groups and breaking it out it's the same thing you know you don't want to just have kids tuning into a a Zoom call from home and just watching the whole thing because it's really akin to having people stand up in front of a classroom for six hours a day. You want it to be mindful. There's times when you're in there, we do want that synchronous connection in the classes, but it can be 10 minutes. It can be something where you're connecting with the kids in the room and then you're going and doing some asynchronous work. And so I think the families are going to start seeing that done in a more artful and um, mindful way as we get better at our craft, which has changed. Our craft has changed. All of our teachers and our, even our really experienced teachers, um, they, there's a feeling, and I would say for me as well, there's a feeling of being new again. Uh, and it's a little scary, quite frankly, because the lessons that we're creating, when you see a good remote lesson created, it takes about three times the amount of time to create uh, that lesson than it does to create an in-person lesson for a teacher. So if families see a great lesson out there, or if students see it, know that that took a long time for that teacher to create. But like anything else you put your heart and soul into, 
as a student or as a staff member, we're going to be better for it at the end of the day. So it's just where we are right now. So it, uh, it, it sounds like here we're a month into the, well, we're in the second, we're in the, in the, we're in the second month, not full 30 days, but we're right. in October yes. as, we, as we take yep. this today. Uh, it sounds like, you know, teachers are excited to be back. A lot of great work's been done. Uh, there's been a lot of collaboration across uh, the community, right? Yes. Staff, teachers, faculty, school committee, everybody. Uh, you're going to be circling back again to continue that in a big meeting in the end of October. That's correct. Uh, there'll be more opportunities for these online or collaborative Zoom sessions to, you know, uh, as you, you said, you've already done. Yep. Uh, and uh, the kids are getting a, a, a different and, and, in some ways, you said, a much more robust opportunity to learn uh, all across the spectrum, which is great. It is, and we're really trying to listen. I, I have a um, Zoom um, workshop, or a, a uh, we're calling it a virtual coffee, um, on the 14th at 6 p.m., which I've sent out to the community. So, you know, just to be there to answer questions, and if I don't have an answer, to gather the information and get back to the person. So we're really trying to be communicative and open about it, um, and just really emphasizing that, uh, you know, folks should approach teachers as a collaborator, because that's what we're looking at. Um, sometimes the, uh, the information we get from, from families can be so helpful to us because we're, we're focusing on something and may not see uh, the forest for the trees in this new environment. But I, I, I wanna say I'm really happy with the level of effort our staff's putting in and doing a great job. That's fantastic. So thank you, Pat. It's uh, great to talk to you. And I, I know you, we'll be circling back again. So uh, uh, My pleasure. Um, yeah, I'd love to talk to you. Anything we can do to um, keep the communication flowing in the town. Absolutely. And uh, thanks to 143 TV. Yes. Thank you, 143. Thanks again for joining us on this week's edition of Cohasset Common. And thanks to Superintendent Sullivan and the look at what's going on in Cohasset schools. Looking forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. Enjoy the week.